All right, so let's talk about interviews. As you might know, landing a job these days is not an easy task. Less than 10% of applicants get an interview, which is a significant decrease over the past five years. So if you manage to secure interviews or even a single interview, congratulations. If you're struggling to get any interviews or phone screens, chances are the problems within your resume. I talk about this in depth in some of my previous videos. I'll leave a couple links down below if you guys are interested to check it out. To those of you who don't know me, hello, welcome. My name is Ranesh and I'm a data scientist working at a startup in the tech field. I've had the privilege of interviewing at a bunch of different companies over the past few years. And I've also experienced interviewing a lot of different candidates for different data positions. I've experienced that witness firsthand the attributes and qualities of successful candidates during the interview stage. That being said, in this video, we're going to dive into how to ace your interviews in this day and age. Generally, there are two types of interviews when it comes to data science and analytics, the behavioral and the technical interviews. By the way, I have a cheat sheet of common data science interview questions gathered by myself and many other data scientists active in the industry right now. Uh, if you're interested, I'll leave a link down below to our Discord community. All right, so when it comes to technical questions, the best way to succeed is through practice. Technical questions for data science and analytics jobs can range uh, from simple data structures and algorithms questions uh, up to some complex machine learning algorithms or statistical analysis techniques. So make sure you have a broad understanding of these topics. It's also helpful to brush up on some of your understanding of these concepts or techniques, such as you know, machine learning theory, understanding when to use uh, ensemble or uh, tree-based models, what are the different tree-based models, you know, bagging and boosting, stuff like that, uh, just so you don't get caught off guard during your interview. Obviously, it's incredibly difficult to cover all the technical questions that could be asked. That's why I recommend looking at the job description. Generally, the job description will cover stuff like, you know, job requirements, uh, tools and languages used day to day, uh, what tasks you'll be carrying out, you know, what tools you'll be using, what statistical analysis techniques you'll be using, stuff like that, just so you can understand what to expect in your interview and prepare for that. For example, if you're interviewing for a data science position and they list A-B testing in the job description, I would definitely prepare uh, when it comes to understanding A-B testing, when it's used, how to randomize your uh, control and test group and make sure there's a balanced uh, distribution between both groups and stuff like that, just so you can better answer the question uh, during the interview if that question does come up. It's also super helpful to showcase your prior experiences using that technique, tool, language, framework, whatever it may be, just to show or display that you're comfortable and confident using that technique in a working environment. Technical questions can also be more general, especially in the data field. A common technical question that I like to ask when I conduct my interviews is talk me through a project that you worked on where you face certain technical challenges and how you overcame them. Obviously, these types of questions can be more challenging to certain people if they don't have any project experience to pull from. That is why I strongly recommend creating a portfolio with a select few projects that you're proud of that display a broad variety of skills catered for that specific job. This allows you to give a better visual representation of the problems and challenges you faced during that project and how you overcame them. You can even highlight things you would do differently if this was an older project. Generally, what the interviewer wants to learn at this point is one that you understand the business problem and have an idea of how to approach it. Uh, you've successfully navigated through challenges before in the past and that you're able to learn over time and communicate your findings. Communicating your thought process and being transparent with your workflow is extremely beneficial. Speaking of technical questions, I personally use interview query to prepare for my interviews. Like recently, I was brushing up on some search and sort algorithms and I decided to use uh, interview query to help me with that. Interview query is essentially the industry standard when it comes to preparation to landing your dream job. It covers everything from interview prep, study resources, roadmaps, and even internal job boards. The thing I love most about interview query is the reality of the tool when it comes to interview question scenarios. The questions asked represent general day-to-day -day problems that data professionals have to solve and also range from theoretical multiple choice questions to hands-on coding material asked by big tech companies such as Meta, Amazon, Spotify, etc. They even provide challenges and take-home assignments for more challenging and longer projects that you can work on. I also love the community aspect of this tool which allows you to interact with the community and understand different people's perspective when it comes to answering a technical question. Thank you so much Interview Query for sponsoring this video. For those of you who are looking to break into the field of data, check out the first link in the description below. Behavioral questions on the other hand tend to be more general across the board and not specific to data science. Some common behavioral questions that we tend to ask from topics like communication challenges, constructive criticism, and collaboration. Again, the full list of questions will be in our Discord community link down below. The main key to answering these questions is to understand the desired outcome. They want to understand if you're going to be a good fit in the company and also within the team. So my suggestion is go do some research on the company and try to dig out the company values and then give some examples where you display uh, yourself incorporating those values so you can be a better fit. For example, if they ask you about a time where you receive constructive criticism, talk about a time where you displayed the capabilities of implementing feedback from a coworker or a supervisor. A very common framework to answer these behavioral questions is the STAR framework. With this framework, you talk about the situation, the task at hand, the action followed, and the results that come along. Essentially, this framework helps you structure and format your answers to be comprehensive and also answer the question completely. I think this is a very good framework to follow. However, I've seen a couple of candidates who use this framework and come off a bit scripted. So I think just being honest and being yourself and being natural is the best way to go. You'll come off less robotic. Honestly, after having worked at a startup for a while now, I think the behavioral aspect is much more important than the technical one. I've seen candidates who excel technically but get passed on because they don't meet the behavioral scope that we're looking for. I guess the idea is technical skills can be thought, but behavior is harder to teach or change, which 
can lead to long-term problems. Aside from building your portfolio, I highly recommend researching the company you're gonna be interviewing for and also research the people who are gonna be interviewing you. Making a personal connection can set you apart, so I highly recommend doing some research uh, and coming up with questions that are catered to the company specifically or the interviewer who's interviewing you. Honestly, stuff like this is super underrated and every time someone applies it, they tend to stand out from the crowd and also increase their chances dramatically. A little Google search can go a long way. Here's some other general tips. First impressions definitely matter, so make sure to be there on time, if not slightly earlier. Your interviewers are gonna look you up, so make sure you have your social media profiles optimized. Remember, it's okay to ask questions throughout the interview. You wanna make sure you answer every question to the best of your ability, so if you need clarification before giving an answer, make sure to ask for it. Try not to divert from the question being asked. I often see people go on a tangent when answering questions, which sets off a bad tone for the rest of the interview. When you're answering these questions, make sure to stick to the topic at hand and make sure you draw yourself back consciously to the main points being asked. Lastly, make the experience meaningful to you and try to learn as much as you can from it. At the end of the day, interviews are an investment for both parties, so if you're curious about a specific component of the company or maybe an interviewer's previous experience or projects, don't be afraid to talk about it towards the end of the interview. Who knows, you might just impress them with your curiosity and your eagerness to learn. Acing your interviews doesn't have to be an impossible task. If you take the right steps and put in enough effort, you will definitely see results. A lot of people tend to get intimidated by the technical component of the interviews and like I said before, the best way to prepare for technical interviews is through practice. So make sure you get your exposure to all these technical questions that could be asked based on the job description of that specific job. Also, do not underestimate the behavioral component of the interview. Asking personal questions and building a deeper connection can give you an advantage which will likely land you the job. That's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed, feel free to leave a like down below and do consider subscribing. As always, if you have any questions, comments or concerns, feel free to leave them down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.